Today we will see how to easily create a production like Spring Boot REST API service. If you missed the introduction video on Spring Boot, I recommend watching it. There is a link in the top right corner of your screen. In this video, we will cover these steps to create Spring Boot REST API. First, we will set up Spring Boot project using Spring Initializer and add the required dependencies. Then we will create a controller to define REST endpoints. We will also create service and data access layer as well. Then we'll show you how to build and package the application. Then run the application and test the REST APIs. First, we need to go to Spring Initializer and configure our REST API application. For that, open your favorite internet browser and go to start.spring.io. This site is used to create the basic startup package for our application. In this, we need to first mention the project type, programming language, Spring Boot version, Java version, and some metadata of our project. Now with this basic setup is done and in the next step we need to add all the required dependencies. As we are creating REST API application, we need to add Spring Web Dependency. It will provide us all the required things for creating a web application including an embedded Tomcat server as well. Also we'll use some kind of database to store and retrieve data. So for that we will use H2 database. For this, we need to add two more dependencies. One is for Spring Data JPA to handle the database operations and other one is to have a runtime H2 database. Now to avoid a lot of boilerplate code, we will use another library which is Lombok. Using this, a lot of boilerplate code can be reduced using simple annotations present in Lombok. Once we have provided everything, just click on generate and it will import your project in the zip format in your system. Now unzip this project and import this using any of your favorite IDE. The IDE may take some time to complete the import of your Maven project because it will read the pom.xml and download all the required dependencies. Now the Maven project import is successful and we can see in this external library section all the dependencies that we have defined are already downloaded in this part. So all the main source code or the executables will be present in the main and all the test cases will be present in test directory. Inside main again we have two other directories. One is for Java, other one is for resources. Resources is mainly for the properties or any static or template files and Java is for all the packages that we have. So currently we have a single package where we have one class which is REST API application. So we talk a lot about how Spring Boot helps in setting up the application quickly. Now let me show you how. So currently I have not coded anything in this application. I have just created it from Spring Initializer and just imported it in IntelliJ. So now let me just start it and see whether this application is actually a runnable application or not. Now to run that in the REST API application itself, we can directly run this particular class because it contains a main method. So here in the logs, we can see the application is getting started. This is the confirmation that the application startup is complete and we have an embedded Tomcat running on port 8080. So how we can check that? We can go to any web browser and try to access localhost colon 8080. So when I try to access localhost colon 8080, I'm getting a white label error page. So this is the actual error which is being returned from our Spring Boot application. So that means our application is up and running but it is not able to find this slash mapping which is configured in any of our controller that is why we are getting the status as 404 not found. So this is how simple you can set up your application or do the initial setup of your application which can be run very easily using Spring Boot. So I have not done anything here. I have just 
created a project template from Spring Initializer, downloaded it, and after that imported that in my IntelliJ IDE. Now we are going to use a three layered architecture to develop this application. These layers are controller layer, business logic layer, and data access layer. Each of these layers have, will have a separate set of responsibilities. Controller layer will contain the controller classes. These classes can be used to receive the requests, validate the data and return the response back to the caller. Business logic mainly resides in the service layer. All the business related calculations and transformations will happen in the service classes. A repository classes acts as data access layer. This layer is responsible for all the CRUD operations, which are create, read, update and delete operations. All these classes or interfaces will be put in separate packages in the project. Now as we are clear with all the layers that we need to create, so let us begin. Now before we define our controller, service or DAO layer, let us define and configure few of our database related properties. So it will be similar to the properties that we have discussed in one of our previous videos where we have created a Spring MVC project using Spring Boot. Now here this is the S2 database configuration. First is the JDBC URL. After that we have a driver class name which is the driver class name which will be picked from the S2 database jar. Then we have defined username password and the type of dialect which hibernate will be converting to. And after that we have enabled the console so that we will be able to see all the tables in the browser itself. And in the end one hibernate related configuration is also defined which is DDL auto. That means whatever entities that we update in our Java application, the same will be reflected in the database. Suppose in, in one of our entities, if we add one particular column, then that same column will be automatically added in the database as well. Now after defining all the database related properties, let's try to create our first entity, which is an employee. So for that I have created one class employee. Now let us move this entity class to its respective package. So all the entities will be in entities direct package. So here, let me make use of IDE feature to move this particular class. So here you can see we have an entity package created and employee classes added to it. Now inside that we will have few fields. Let's say we have employee ID, employee name, employee address and employee projects. So employee projects will be a set of string. That means the number of projects to which employee has been allocated to. Now to make it an entity, that is to map it to a particular table in the database, we need to add few annotations. The first annotation is entity annotation. So this particular annotation is present in Jakarta persistence dot entity. Now other than that, what we will need, we need all the getter setter methods, two string method, all the constructor and all the required methods. So to do that, if you remember in the beginning, I have told you that we are adding one library, which is Lombok. That library is very helpful. You will see how it is helpful here because I will not write any getter setter method, any constructor or any other two string method. I will just add few annotations and everything will be taken care automatically. So to add all the getter setter to string hash code and equals method, we can use at the rate data annotation from Lombok and to have both the constructors, there are two different annotations. One is no arc constructor. Other one is all arc constructor. So here you can see we have to write minimum code. We don't have to write those boilerplate getter setter methods. So all these will be taken care by this Lombok library. Now one more change will be required here because JPA works based on identity columns. So we need to define one of the field as identity column, which will be similar to a primary key column in our database. So mostly for employees, it will be employee ID to denote that particular column. There is an annotation at the rate ID. So that is also present in Jakarta persistent. So this particular employee ID field is now tagged as a primary key here. So JPA will work around this 
field by considering it as a primary key for employee records. Now in production, we never expose our entities in the controller. So to expose or return any value or pass the values from one layer to another layer, we have to create some data transfer objects or DTOs. So for this employee of entity class, let us create one employee DTO class as well, which we will be using for transferring from one layer to another layer or returning from the controller. Again, similar to the package changes that we have done for entities, let us move these DTOs to their respective packages. So now here you can see one more package is created where we have employee DTO and similar to employee we will have all these fields available because employee DTO will be the exact replica of employee entity but the only difference will be it will not be mapped to any table so it will not be connected to any database table so whatever changes we make here will not reflect in the database again by using the Lombok annotations we will be able to reduce the whole boilerplate code here so now we are ready with our employee entity and employee dt now we have defined that this employee entity will be uh, mapped to an employee table in the database but how the jpa will be able to manage all of its operation so for that in spring data jpa we need to define a repository interface now let me first define it then we'll explain it so this is our employee repository it should not be a class it should be interface so let us move it to its specific package as well so here i have created one repositories package let's move this to repositories package okay now we are ready with this interface here two things we need to do First one is we need to annotate it with at the rate repository annotation that will mark it as a managed bean as well as it will tell Spring that this particular interface will be used for database operations. So now we have defined that this is an employee repository, but how it will come to know for which particular entity it has to manage all the database related operations so for that we need to extend one of the existing interface which is already available in spring data jpa so let me just extend one of them which is jpa repository so in jpa repository i have to give two parameters as well here you can see one is the type of the object other one is id so in this the first parameter will be the entity that I need that this particular repository needs to manage that is employee. The second argument is what is the data type of ID column of that particular entity. So if we see in employee entity, the data type of ID is long. So here we have to define long. So now with this, we are ready with our repository as well. So using only this much of code, we will be able to add or fetch records from employee table using this employee repository now with all these classes we are done with our data access layer now let us move to its previous layer which is service layer so if you try to follow all the standard design patterns and design principles then it is always recommended to code for the abstractions so we will also follow the same approach so before we create any service class first we will define the contract for that particular service class which can be defined using interfaces so let me just create one employee service interface In this particular interface, we will define the contract of employee service like what all functionalities an employee service can have so that any implementation that we want to write will actually implement this particular interface and provide the implementation of all those functionalities which are required. Again, we have to move this particular service to its respective package as well. Now the first method that I have defined is to add an employee. So in this case, what we are expecting that add employee method will have an employee DTO as a parameter and it will return a response entity of type string. Now let us add one functionality for reading the employees as well. So here we have view all employees method 
which will return response entity of type list of employee DTOs. Now, whichever employee service implementation that we are going to write, it will implement this particular interface and provide the implementation of these two functionalities where we will be able to add an employee by passing an employee DTO and view all the employees which are present in the database. So let me create that employee service implementation as well. So this is our class. Now here we need to make sure that we define this particular implementation as a managed bean. So to do that, let me use a service annotation at the rate service annotation. Now what we will do, we will implement the employee service. So as soon as we uh, write this implements employee service, the ID will start giving you an error because it has it is expecting us to implement few methods which are present in that service. So now using ID's help, we can click on implement method. It will give you a list of that. So we need to implement both of these. Click on OK and basic structure will be automatically created. So here we will write our own logic to add an employee in the database and to retrieve and view all the employees from database. Now to perform any operation on the database, we have already created one repository which is employee repository. Now we need to inject that particular dependency in this class. The first most basic option is to use auto wired, but that approach is not encouraged now with the latest releases of Spring and Spring Boot. So what we will do, we will go ahead with the constructor based dependency injection. So for that, what we will do using Lombok, we will create all our constructor. So using this automatically one constructor will be created where all the fields will be automatically added. So how we can define the repository instance then we can define it as private final employee repository and that's it we don't have to write auto wired anywhere so that particular dependency is removed so it will automatically inject the employee repository dependency using constructor based dependency injection now let us first start with view all employees so in this using the repository instance that we have created we will try to find all the available values which are present in employee table so to do that we can use employee repository dot find all method this particular call will return us the list of employee entities so here we have all the employees so all employees are here but in the return type, if you see, we are returning list of employee DTOs. So for that, first we need to apply one small check where we will be checking if this all employee list is empty. That means there is no record present in employees table. So in that case, what we will return and in other case, first we need to convert these employee entities to employee DTOs and then return as a part of response entity. So if all employee list is empty, then we are returning uh, an object of response entity where collections dot empty list is returned and HTTP status not found, which is 404 is returned. Now in the second scenario where employee list is not empty, in that case, we need to create a function which will convert this list of employees entity to list of employee details. So in this function, we will try to use stream API to convert our entity list to a list of employee details. So in this stream processing, what we are doing, we are 
converting this all employees list to first stream and then using a map operation we are converting each entity to one DTO. So for that we have used one utility which is already available in Spring Boot which can be used to copy the properties from entities to DTO or DTO to entity. So using that beanutils.copy property we have copied all the property details from one entity to one DTO and return that particular DTO and this particular lambda operation happened for each and every element of all employees list which is list of employee entities and in the end we are collecting all the DTOs in a list as well. So now let me directly try to return this particular value. So here on line number 32 we will have a list of all employees DTO using this convert entities to DTO method. Now after that let us try to return the response in required format which is response entity list of employee DTOs. So for that let me write a return statement. So in response entity there is one dot ok method. So here we don't need to provide HTTP status explicitly because we know it is a ok request. So we can use response entity dot ok and in the body we can provide all the DTO list that we have created. So with this we have completed the implementation of view all employees. Now let us just try to revisit what we have done here. So in this using employee repository dot find all method we have retrieved list of employee entities and then we are checking if it's empty then we are returning a response entity with an empty list and HTTP status not found. And if we have few records present in all employees entities then we are converting those entities to the DTO and using that list of DTOs we are returning a ok response with response entity and all the employee details. Now with this we are done with view all employees implementation. Now let us move to the add employee implementation. Now this particular implementation is going to be very simple. So now we already have one employee DTO. Now while saving any data to the table we cannot use DTO. We have to create an instance of employee entity. So let us create one object of employee entity. Now again using beans util class we will copy all the values from DTO to the entity. Now up till this point all the values which were present in employee DTO are now copied to employee entity as well. Now using the employee repository we will save this particular entity in the database. Now this particular execution of saving an entity it will return that particular entity back if it is saved successfully. Now let us just try to access its value. To do that I have assigned whatever is getting returned from dot save call and in the response we will use this particular saved employee data. So in this we are returning a response entity with 200 ok status and a body as employee saved and the employee id which got saved. So with this we are done with the service implementation as well. Now we are only left with controller implementation. As discussed earlier the controllers will also reside in their specific packages. So now let me create one controller class. So here let me configure its package as well. So we'll be saving the all the controller classes in dot controllers package. Now we have moved it there. Now what is a controller? So in our rest application we will have rest controllers. For that in spring boot we have an annotation which is rest controller annotation. This annotation will mark this class to be a rest controller. That means all the rest requests which are coming to the dispatcher servlet they can come to this particular controller as well based on the URL that they are heading. So to have a basic common URL on top of all the methods let us define one request mapping. So here we have request mapping slash rest slash employee. 
Now the controller will not directly communicate with the database. It will communicate via service. Now to do that again, we have to inject the dependency of service class. So to do that, let us perform the similar operations again. So here we have defined one private final employee service, but one thing is missing that we have not created a constructor. So to do that again, we will make use of Lombok library. So using all our constructor, this particular dependency will be automatically injected. And again, we need not to write any auto wired annotation. Now let us first write a get call, which will return us all the employees which are present in that particular table. So this particular annotation will tell us that if any request which comes to slash rest slash employee slash view all, then the method written below this particular annotation will be responsible for handling that particular request. Now let us create that function as well. So here we are returning response entity with list of employees detail. So this method does not expect any argument to be passed. So now using employee service instance that we have injected here. So what we will do, we will call its method of view all employees. So what this particular method returns, if we see it returns the response entity list of employee DTO. So that is exactly what we are also trying to return. So directly what we can write, we can write a return statement with employee service dot view all employees. Now let us write another mapping, which is to add an employee. Now to add an employee, we cannot call a get mapping. To add an employee, we will be posting some data to the server. So for that we have post mapping. Now, whatever method we will write below this particular annotation that will be responsible for handling, adding a employee to the database. Now in this, we need to define what type of request body that we are expecting. So to do that, we have one annotation, which is at the rate request body. So whatever object that we will define here that we are expecting to be coming in this particular post request. So what we are expecting that anyone who is posting that data, they will send an object of employee DTO. So in our method, first we will do, we will do a very basic validation. We'll see if this employee DTO is null, then we will return a 400 bad request. Otherwise we will call the service method to add this particular DTO to the database. So here what we are doing, if employee DTO is not null, then we are calling the employee service dot add employee by passing the employee DTO. Otherwise we are returning a bad request with the message that request body cannot be null. So now uh, I think one thing we are missing here, we need to return this particular uh, response as well, whatever we are getting from add employee. So if we see from add employee, we are getting a response of type response entity string. So that is the exact response that we are expecting in controller as well. So let us try to return this directly as well. So with this, we are ready with all the components that we need to create. So before we test our application, let us just revisit what all components that we have created. First, we have the employee controller where all the mappings are present, which URL to hit if we want to view all the employees, which URL to hit if we want to add an employee and what kind of data that we need to pass on. After that, we have a service contract where we have defined the functionalities which will be available in the employee service and an employee service implementation. So in the implementation, we have add employee and view all employee. So both of these functionalities were present in the contract of employee service, which are provided in the employee service implementation. Then we have employee entity and employee DTO. 
which is used to store the data and employee repository which is responsible for doing all the database related operations of employee entity and in the application properties we have defined all the details of database which we will be using which is h2 database which is in memory so let me just start this application and then we will first see the s2 console and see if we are able to see the tables automatically getting created and what is the data currently available and after that we will be using one more tool which is postman that we will use to perform get and post requests so first let us start the application so because we have just added the lombok so our ide will require this confirmation we need to enable the lombok annotation processing now using any browser let me try to open the s2 console first so this is the s2 console so all the details are already filled up so if it is not there you can uh, get the jdbc url from logs or from the application properties file and the driver class as well now providing the password which is 123 that we have defined let me try to connect so here you can see that employee table is already created so let me just try to see what all data that we have currently we do not have any data now let me open postman as well so using postman we will perform both get as well as post operations get operation we can perform using browser as well but for posting some data we need specific tools so postman man is one of that tool that we can use to post the data to the servers so this is how the interface of postman tool will look like so here i have already created two tabs one is to view all the employees and other one is to add the employees so let us first try to get all the employees so here in the url you can see we are hitting localhost 8080 rest employee slash view all so let me just send the request and here you can see we are not getting any data so this is an empty response that means there is no data present in that particular table now let us try to add an employee as well now adding an employee will be a post request so that type of request that we want to send you can select from this drop down so here we are selecting post and the second point is we need to send a request body as well so to do that there is an option of adding a request body inside that you need to select raw and in this particular drop down json because we'll be sending the body in the form of json so here this is an object which we have created so it will be the exact mapping of employee dto we have employee id which is the field here and the field name in employee dto as well then its value and similarly all other fields now using this data let us try to add an employee so here you can see we have received a message that employee saved with id 12346 now before we go back to the database to check it let us try to get that list of employees using the endpoint of view all itself so if i send a request here you can see we are getting list of employees where we have one employee this is the exact same employee that we have just saved now let me go back to the database and show you the detail in table as well now again i will execute select star from employee and here you can see the detail is already present for the one employee that we have posted now let us try to post one more employee to see if we are really getting a list in the view all endpoint so this is the second employee object that we'll be sending it has different employee id name address and projects now let me send a post request with this data and we can see the employee saved with the id is returned now let me call the get again so here you can see we are able to get both the employee details in a list of objects so if we want to check in the database that we also we can do so here you can see we have two different rows in the employee table now so this is the complete process and structure how uh, the rest apis are developed in production so there are few 
enhancements that you can do to this code like in our employee entity we have only defined id but we have not defined any strategy to generate the ids because as of now we are passing the id itself but what you can do you you should not pass the id values while posting the data these ids should be automatically generated either they should be automatically generated at the hibernate level or you can define some sequence in the database so based on that the id values will be generated so this is uh, a kind of assignment for you so you can try it out try out few different strategies and see uh, how these different strategies play out so if you have any queries any doubt in that please do let me know in the comment section so i think we are done with the our session for today i think this has uh, extended a bit long but uh, this will be the most detailed video that you will see which has explained how to create a production like rest api so so that was it so in our next video we will come up with some more topics from spring boot so till then if you have any other queries or any other topics that you want me to cover please do comment in the comment section so once again thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time till then happy coding